When I think of you, I think of a creative person. Many people who watch this channel consider themselves creative, maybe not in sewing, but maybe knitting or crochet or making musical instruments or, or all sorts of creative people watch me. But it's come to my attention that sometimes we don't really feel properly, really, actually, legitimately creative at all. But what I do is not real creativity, we'll say. I have letters like, Donna wrote to me and said, I never get good at anything. I just feel like I'm always copying somebody else. I don't feel like I have any creativity of my own. Or Esther, who said, I find that I'm not as creative as I would like to be because I have to have a pattern in order to make something and then I just follow what the pattern tells me to do. And I guess Esther feels like that's not really, that's not legit as creative work. I gotta say, I, I, I sympathize with this. I empathize with this. This is something I've felt too, that I'm not properly creative that really creative is something other than what I do. I'm from a background as a mathematician. I'm not a historian. I'm not, I don't know, I didn't go to fashion school. I didn't study dress history. Dress history wasn't a thing back when I went to university. I'm a mathematician. And that means I'm very good at those, um, that very convergent thinking. I'll explain what that is in a minute. Everything I do is copying. I agree with Donna. Everything I do is copying. Think about it. All the dresses you've seen that I've made, pretty much copying. I go and find a Worth gown, I recreate it. I go and find a dress from 1908 in costume in detail, which I've got on the shelf over there, and I recreate it. I copy it. I figure out how it was done. I reverse engineer it and I recreate it. Is that just copying or is that creative? I think that what we worry about is the difference between convergent and divergent thinking. So convergent thinking, if you think of two things converging, two things converge, they come together. When two things diverge, they move apart. So converging comes into a point, diverging goes outwards. And I think we characterize creative work or creative thinking as divergent. It's how many uses can you think of for a paper clip? It's how many different ways can we do this? And we think of that as being properly creative. But I think convergent thinking is creative too. I'm a mathematician. I like convergent problems, as in problems where there's a right answer. We're, we're trying to converge towards the one answer to the to the problem. This is what you get with people who are very interested in, say, historically, historical accuracy. So I like to take an original dress and figure out how was it done. And even if there's no way to really figure out ultimately how it, you know, the one answer to how it was done, I'm trying to move towards that ultimate solution. How is it done? Can we recreate it? Can we make it look just like the original one? And Bernadette does the same. She's all about how do we do this? What was the original practice? And I think that's creative too. That has a place too. We're being creative in the sense of contributing to, cre to a creative conversation. We're creating something that wasn't there before. The dress itself that I'm creating, or that Bernadette is creating, is a thing that wasn't there before. You give birth to something that wasn't there before when you're being creative. But then there's another side to creativity when you look at Rachel Maxey, who just has this explosive creativity that she can just, she seems to be able to turn her hand to anything. So that's what I call, what I would call a divergent sort of creativity that is all going outwards in all sorts of different directions. Or Angela Clayton, who's always doing something different and new that's a sort of divergent thinking when you're just exploding in all different directions. But both of them count as creativity. If you need to follow a pattern, that's still creativity. 
you're still creating something that wasn't there before. However you look at it, you're still creating something that's new. You're still giving birth to something that's new. That's still a creative act. So don't, don't think that the only way to be creative is to um, create the pattern, create the idea out of nowhere, something that's never been seen before. It's a myth. Everything that seems to be new is inspired by something that came before. Even, you know, a, an incredible creative costume designer who creates a show like Hamilton, those ideas came from somewhere. The ideas that led to those costume designs came from a source, source inspiration. A number of ideas were put together in a new way. So creativity comes in all sorts of different forms. And I think that every kind of creativity has a place. We are creative as a community. We're all playing our own little part in a bigger picture. So go, pre go be creative this week in your way. Do your kind of creativity. I can't do Rachel's kind of creativity. I sometimes envy her kind of creativity, in fact. I mean, I wish I could just go off and make a baby Yoda one day. And then, you know, somebody else, you might be envying the way I work. That's just one different type of creativity. So don't be looking so much at somebody else's style of creativity and comparing yourself and saying, well, that's real creativity. Your type of creativity works too. You still get to have the joy and the journey of discovery in whatever way you choose to do it. So, go be creative this week, your way. <laughs>